From the luxurious setting of London's Mayfair, 48 of the greatest poker players in the world gathered for the World Open. Yes! Wow. This is what's gonna get me busted, my big mouth. Thinking Ahead 101. Thanks for great TV. Ah! Oh! Yay! It's the best bet I've ever seen in my life. Yes! This is the final table, and the journey for our remaining finalists is nearly at an end. Players have fallen, and we've seen some incredible bets, bluffs, and raises in this match. We started with tournament champions and huge online cash players, but tonight we crown the one winner of the Party Poker World Open 5. An early casualty. Andy There's Black, ice. first out. It's a quarter million first prize for one of the final six, and Phil Locks in pole position. Oh, I knew he raised me. I just can't take it. I can't take it in my bones. I'm uh, hanging on the edge of this cliff. Jennifer Tilly's been dazzling, and she has a healthy stack. I had to school him. I'm sorry, that was ugly. Online qualifier Jan Veit has picked his moments and remains in prime contention. Uh, I guess I'm now losing my chips again, but I'm all in. Poker Hall of Famer Mike Sexton has steady hands and a strong heart. Oh, boy. Bad boy Luke Schwartz has been behaving himself, but will that last? Got the worst call I've ever seen. Bodo Spresny has been waiting for cards, but is his time running out? Come Champions get the trophy. Which of the six will lift it? Seize the day. Time for action. Neil, time for a guy like Phil Locke to step it up. Well, again, I still think until they've got rid of Bodo, the game circles around him and not much is going to happen. People are going to be a bit wary. They, Bodo's got uh, 79,000. He's got 20 of it in the blind here. He's more or less pop committed in the blind. But, you know, Jennifer's got an above average hand. She'll fancy taking on what she considers to be a blind hand of Bodo. She thinks he's going to have to call with any two. And Queen Ted is a Do you know what's amazing though? He's always got an ace. When it's when it's the hand, he's always got an ace, this guy. Yeah, I mean, obviously, he, he's called there. It'll be interesting to see what he was prepared to fold or if he was prepared to fold. But, well, maybe Bodo's way is, is the way. He's got 168,000 in this pot. Well, it's definitely a way of crawling up the money ladder. I don't think it's really a way of winning the tournament. And, you know, as in most poker tournaments, the, most of the prize money goes to the, the first few places, and generally laddering is not really a, a great strategy. I, I don't know, I think Bodo needs to have a word with himself about this performance, really. Not again. Not again. No. Ace, ace. Uh, there's going to be a lot of this. All ins, calls, and flops, turns, and rivers. Anything but the queen ten, really. Ace of hearts. Ooh, that's an interesting card. Yeah, I took one of Jennifer's outs out, but but then give her four more. There's the ace. Yeah, that was pretty oh, much the size of it. Bodo sits Hold back on. down. He's been up and down a lot. I was rooting against you, as you can probably imagine. You know? <laughs> We're still six-handed. I feel very good that I'm uh, on the final table now. We can play pretty deep because we have uh, 300,000 chips instead of 100,000 in the runner-up heat. And the field is tough again. We play with Jennifer Tilly, Phil Lark and Luke Schwartz. All of them are pretty good players and I hope I can do very well. And of course there's a little bit luck involved and I hope I can earn really much money. Jan Voigt hasn't played a hand for like an hour or yeah, something. That's what it feels like to me. Yeah, you're exactly right, but I fancy um, 
he hasn't had a hand for one, and he hasn't had any spots, has he? He really hasn't, but this is it. We've said it before in this final. People haven't been proactively looking for those spots. They've been waiting for the good cards to come along. And generally, you know, just a battle of who's the best at waiting is never really a great poker game. Well, Whoop. Mike's found a hand, <laughs> pocket eights, and he's shoved it in, and you can't blame him for that. I think that's absolutely the right play. He's got 13 big blinds. I would have done exactly the same, and I'm sure most people on the table oh, would have, oh, go. my word. There you go. Well, Jan has been patient, and now he's been rewarded. Well, so far. You see everyone else all smiley eyely. It's what they've been waiting for, but, you know, two of the other stacks to have a clash. Yeah, well, Bodo for sure. This is what we be hanging around for. Yeah, I'm barring an eight here. Um, oh Yan V is going to go to the top of the pile again. Yeah, this is a bit unlucky for Mike. So far. Is he covered, is the question. I think he is. He is covered, Jesse, yeah. So he needs to find an eight on the Turnal River to survive. They played so fantastic, so solid, this newly Hall of Famer in the WSOP Hall of Fame, Mike Sexton. And uh, I think he really would have loved this title. And that's it. Mike's out. Wow. Has he got me covered? Early on, it looked like it might be Mike's night, might be his tournament. And... Uh, it was always going to come down right now to just who, the yeah. next cold deck. And if he'd have played it like he played the last hand, the ace free would have got away from it, wouldn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Very, this game's on the margins, isn't it? <laughs> One, two, busted. That is going to start to shake up the leaderboard. I kind of feel like we're going to be back to, you know, the regular uh, a little moving and grooving. Dan V, has he gone chip leader? Well, he ain't far away. Phil, Yan, Jennifer, uh, top three, and uh, there's the two guys to maneuver. We've just lost Mike Sexton from our final table, Hall of Fame inductee very recently, unfortunately couldn't make it to the end of this tournament. But it's been very tough out there on the final table, hasn't it? Uh, very tough. When you play six levels and don't lose a player, yeah. everybody's short on chips compared to the blinds. and. Yeah. And I picked up two eights and went all in. The big blind picked up two kings, so just bad luck on my part. But, you know, everything would have changed several times. The guys with the weaker hand were all in, and they all outdrew people and stayed alive. And, you know, had some players gone out, it might have changed things. But, you know, that's poker. That's the way it goes. And, unfortunately for me, I didn't quite make it tonight. Uh, well, we are very sorry to see you go. Cause, and, again, congratulations on the induction into the Poker Hall of Fame. That's a, a massive honor and certainly well deserved and, and we're all very proud to say so and thank you very much for talking to us well i appreciate it thank you thank you two hands are two minutes two hands. this game now pocket so kings. different Let's from go. where the final table well, started you have i mean lot. Part of the you know I emotions the are all related to how many chips you have how excited is phil lock and schwartz know, uh, there the short stack and boy, it's all over the place isn't he Looks like a man you'd want to steal from right now. Of course, everybody has to steal from everybody. <laughs> Did they move you over one? Were you over there before? I was here. I've always been there. Well, Jennifer's put the raise in first anyway. Well, Luke seems to have taken a conscious decision to take these blinds. He hasn't been proactive in one or two spots before the blinds got to him. So he's obviously decided he could afford to take these blinds. Well, well we know what's happening here. Yeah, Jennifer's raised from under the gum with the old King-10, and uh, Ace-Queen is way too big a hand for Yan to fold. He's going to ask about her chip stack. Now, she's got a, a stack that's big enough to hurt him. He's got about 600, and she we just saw she's got about four, 450 or something, so... It's kind of messy, isn't it? He knows that if he makes any kind of re-raise, he's pot committed and is forced to call if she goes all in. So it's probably easier for him to just close his eyes and push it all in. And if she's got bigger than Ace Queen, good luck to her. So it's, it's a big reach. She's made it 60. He's going to make it 450. Uh, yeah. He, that's, that doesn't sound. That sounds. Is Ace Queen big enough for that? Well, if yeah. he if he does anything else, what's he going to do? He's going to make it maybe 165. What does he do then if she moves all in? Uh, I guess I'm now losing my chips again, but I'm all in. That's exactly. Maybe he didn't want to make that speech beforehand. Yeah. I mean. 
If you're up against a pair of tens, you might want to look a little bit stronger and make that pair of tens think about folding. As, right. as it happens, King 10 is folding 100% and it shouldn't take too yeah. long. Mad Marty Wilson, tournament director, hovering in the background. But Yan takes it down. Big pot. I, I, it, it, that's just so standard, it doesn't, there's just no other play, huh? No, definitely not, yeah. I mean, he's starting to feel good. This Yan fight is looking very strong. I mean, very strong. He's got a couple cards in the right spot, obviously. But he's been a bit, bit magic at some points. No clue what you have. Got a little bit of the old magic. There's five players. Right. Here we go. Well, we're not really finding out whether anyone's prepared to stand up and seize the moment because they keep getting ace queen. Well, yeah, well, well, JV's raised this. Yeah, he certainly you know, like has. We said, he, he's raised it up oh, with I'm eight sorry. nine. Oh, yeah. I apologise. I, 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 and I, Luke's I pushed all in. And it's a nice raise by yeah. Yan Fight. Um, yeah. And the reason it's a nice raise, he was on Bodo's blind. Sure. He was sure. getting this through all the time. Oh well, this is interesting. I do apologise. I, I didn't quite game. get that one right. So. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and Vite's got to call 165. There's 350 in there. He's, he's called it. Two to he's one called it. He knows what's going on. Yeah, and he's in a he's in a decent spot here. He can't ask for a lot. Yeah, he's six to four. Getting two to one. Eight nine. Does he even have to call 150 more? What did he raise? Yeah, I think he does have to call Luke. He's getting two to one as money, and uh, he knows that often you're going to have two overs, and he's going to be two to one. I I think it's a reasonable call. Who it. I think if, if this 8-9 gets through, this there, there'll be That's murders here on the rail. <laughs> oh. I fear the worst. I don't I don't feel for Luke this time. I, I mean, it, it, just drawing it, it starts to feel There's like, the like yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And the ice. He wants it. He wants Jack. it. Yeah, Jack's good. He'll wind up with 515,000 here if, he old, if this holds up, this ace. Massive. Massive! Yeah. There you go. He's, he's doubled up. How could he feel it right now? <laughs> Who calls that, he said. He has to call, though. I think he had to call there, Jesse. I don't think Yan did anything wrong. I would, I would have more, definitely more been raising with 8 9. He's guilty of trying to win it there. No, I think, I think it... Brave play by Yan, and it's nice to see someone trying to go out there and win it. And uh, yes, he has to call it. And uh, obviously, Luke uh, had to play ace queen. Nobody did anything wrong. Luke, bang up the uh, up the chip ladder. Average chips are about 400k, I think. And uh, Yan fight top three all above, and nobody's really that far. Nobody's out of it. That's for sure. I know you think it. You do have a sense, and you said it, you said it, that Luke is not gonna sit on his chips. He's gonna eat them and use them. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not saying that Luke's absolutely been going out there and grabbing the moment. He's definitely had times where I felt he should have been just sticking them in and he, he found a pass. But uh, some of these other guys are, are waiting even more than he is. And, you know, in, in the... Uh, they say in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. <laughs> Can imagine if Luke Schwartz wins this tournament, he's gonna he's gonna get online and give those you know those guys who ask for five dollars, <laughs> you know they will line up on the catch games, <laughs> give a thousand guys five dollars. Uh, well, dude, is Luke's raised here, uh, blind on blind with Jennifer, and Jennifer's decided to peel one off with the old eight-seven. Again, it's a situation where Luke's made it fairly cheap to call, uh, and Jennifer's decided to call. Although it does mean in this situation that Jennifer's calling in position. Having said that, I'm not really in love with calling, and uh, Jennifer may be thinking that she hasn't really got too much involved with the game recently, uh, and it's time to get doing stuff. But 
you know, Luke's going to lead on a lot of flops. The position isn't worth a lot if you don't. Every flop. Well, this is it. So it means that Jennifer having position is not really worth as much as normal. And, uh, you know, she just ended up bleeding a few chips away, really. Well, I think the thing is at a final table, and especially as the numbers start to shrink and, you know, as it gets more shorthanded, I think the most important thing is to uh, mix up your play. Because I think as people are playing with you, they start to get an expectation of what the person does. Like, oh, you know, if they make a big hand, then they check and then they bet the turn, or they'll say, well, she always continuation bets. And so I think you always have to be changing gears and figure out how you're perceived by the other players and then try to, you know, outthink them a little bit. It's like I, at home sometimes I play with these poker computers and they're clocking the way that you play and then they change the way that they play compared to the way that you play. So I think I just have to be like one of those poker computers. I'm a bit worried about Jennifer. She hasn't played a hand for a while and uh, you know, now she's got involved with calling and uh, she doesn't really have a lot of spare chips for that kind of stuff. I would say that Jennifer Tilly needs to move her chips all in on one of the next three hands. And 75. Well, this is an interesting one um, because Jan Veit could decide to move all in here. And he, he might think that this is a reasonable hand to do it with. Uh, he, he would think that Phil, he's got enough chips to make Phil lay down and he could have a nice pick up here. Uh, he would get Phil's raise of 75 plus the blinds, that would be 120. Do you think that Phil would add 25% would would to his stack. <coughs> the problem is, he's dominated, he's not to know that obviously. And, uh, you know, Phil might not be able to pass. It's a lot of Phil's chips, though. Oh, my gosh, you yeah. called it. Yeah, I don't think Phil can pass this. Well, I don't, I don't know, actually. I mean, it's 320. It's half of his remaining stack. And... Uh, 95 in the middle, that's a lot. I'm gonna wow. This and stack. it's pretty tough to call, I think. From, well. from what we've seen, Ian, Fight is making this move mostly because he thinks he has fold equity, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, uh, Neil's just explained it. For sure, and, you know, and he's got a king. He, he's, he, he can add 25% to his stack. OK, if he's up against 10s, jacks, queens, kings, or aces, he's in trouble. If he's up against ace, king is in trouble. You know, it's tough. It's half of your chips. Everything's going quite well in the tournament. You haven't really put too much in. I think he's going to fold. I think he's three times. Well, he has gone. He's opted for the uh, the the pass in earlier situations. It hasn't been quite this big. Well, another, so maybe you're right, Neil. Yeah. Another reason he might fold is go, that there's, is, yeah. there's there's two people at the table that have got very low stacks, uh, and he might think to himself, "Well, I don't really have to do very much here to finish in the top three. Um, why should I really gamble at this stage? Everything's going quite smoothly." Wow. There you go, and a bit of power play there from Jan V. Yeah, and you saw that coming from far off, Neil. You also mentioned earlier how great a hand the King Nine was to make that play with. Obviously, Yan fight reads your book. Yeah, I mean, I just wish I could get dealt the King Nine occasionally, and I'd be able to actually demonstrate the play. <laughs> now, that's three of them over five hundred thousand now. And this is a guy who wants to win the tournament. Five players remain here on our final table, fighting it out for the lion's share of a $480,000 prize pool at the Palm Beach Casino in London. Yeah, and fight back to 600. I think he's sort of been there and gone again about three times tonight at this final table. Uh, has Luke gone quiet? Well, he has gone quiet, hasn't he? But it's interesting with these big blinds. Uh, you know, we saw Jennifer Tilly go quiet, and we've seen Bodo go quiet a couple of times and they get blinded down. Luke seems to have gone quiet, but doesn't seem to have lost much. He uh, hasn't really been quiet for that long. And if Phil raises here, it probably needs to be all in because he's got that pesky envy. Got that. 
Or would you, what would you do with his hand here? Well, this is a, an easy fold for me. Yeah. It's yeah, because you know these two are going to get it on in the blinds or whatever. Ah, good point. He's got jack five. Why don't you just step to one side and let him get on with it? Yeah. Well, he, he's chosen to raise. But he's chosen to raise to 80, which. Is, I can't believe he's going to pass a, again. It's a, it's a limit raise. Or he's going to get it stuck up with him again. Well, this guy ain't going to pass, is he? Well, now Phil's going to start to. All this in. guy's going all in, and, and Phil's going to start to believe he's getting picked on now. That's three times he's open for a small amount, and three times Jan has come over the top all in. And obviously, we know that Phil is going to pass Jack five because. That's what he's done on the other time. I'm going to insta do it, but now, now I'm here and I don't know if I'm going to insta do it. If Phil passes though, Bodo has to push in, right? Uh, 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 yeah, of course yeah, he has of to. Course. He, he definitely has to. Why the question is whether he would have done. Yeah, well, he would have. Well, I don't know. I mean, Neil, listen, I know he's been passing, 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 yeah. but he must call then. It's impossible. Uh, sorry, he must push his chips in yeah. there. If Phil's not in the end, he must push his chips in there. I know where I'm leaning. You know, he's raised it up with Jack Five. Wouldn't you rather step to one side? Let him stick him in. If he gets knocked out, you bump yourself up another place in the prize I think, money. I think I agree with you with Jack Five because. Um, Forget about all that. I mean, how stubborn is Phil to do this again in the face of all that? It was like he looked over there at Yan V's big blind and said, "He's not going to. He would never do it to me again." Yeah, he's. That's what you he's know what I mean. Really. He won't do it the come third get, time. Get I'll, I'll get him. I'll show him I can keep doing it. And let, come on, you got to pay the hundred now. I think he's offering twenty. I don't want to be paying a twenty. I, I, I think he'd be paying a hundred now because I think he's. I think he may go ballistic. If, I mean, this is. I hope you like to hold up if I leave the table. Wow! <laughs> yeah, fight. Six hundred eighty-five thousand. Three big blinds in a row. He shoved over the top of Phil Lock. He's had the hand every time. But wow. Luke's dumped off about 200,000. Uh, Straight. Or not the thing is, JP nothing. Kelly played so good by just limit raising the whole night. Locke so did yeah, not get to, to see Veit's hand. The 20 quid, the 50 Kelly. quid, I'm not I'm enough. Different, different <laughs> He's not, not stopped talking about it. <laughs> well, they're definitely in the middle. Okay, well, Jennifer's moved all in under the gum uh, with an ace in her hand. She has ace five. 320k, only eight big blinds. And yeah, and oh, boy. Well, this is definitely getting oh cool. Oh, boy. Well, he he'll be moving he obviously on. can't raise without going all in, so he goes all in. And Luke decides to fold his hand. Okay, guys. Looks like Jennifer <laughs> needs an ace. She yeah. spiked a few of them in during the tournament, Jesse, so... You wouldn't put it past the would you? <laughs> My German friend with nine. She's been great for this tournament. Let her ride. Let it ride. Oh, she doesn't seem to feel it. Could come on the turn. Comes on the turn. Wow. This is this is uh Tense. This is tense. There's outs now. The She's queen. Got queen as well now. I saw a queen. Hope's a good thing. Wow. Not this time. Not this time. And a nine's old up here, Jesse. And um, wow, well, what a, what a competition Jennifer's had. She, uh, she played very well. Never scared to stick her chips in, but Yan fight. He's cracked. Yeah, and fight, he's cracked the million mark. Yeah. How about yeah, that? Sure it's took long enough to get there. Yeah. We've just lost Jennifer Tilly from the table. It's been a really difficult final table, this one. It seems to be taking a long time to get people right. out. Well, it was really stressful towards the end because everybody had about the same amount. Yeah. And there's basically one move, which is to push. And, uh, you know, you're basically sitting there waiting for a hand. And then when you have sort of a hand, because I never got an actual hand, you're hoping somebody else doesn't have an actual hand. And that's kind of what happens so you know it's disappointing but it was a lot of fun and it was a really
really tough table, I have yeah. to say. So now I'm going to be rooting for Phil. I want <laughs> Phil to go on and win it all. Well, in terms of going back to the early stages, yeah. what was it like sitting there beside him, and especially him having position on you? Did well, it make you a little bit quieter or not? Uh, well, I think when, when you're at a table with Phil, everybody looks quiet because he has so much to say. But um, it was actually really nice to sit next to him because, you know, it's sort of like we're playing like a family. Yeah. Oh, that's really sweet. Well, we're sorry to see you go. You um, gave you. them some much needed glamour at the table. Well, so thank you. Well, you know, that's my job. <laughs> Not entirely. Thank you very much for, for talking to us and uh, thanks for playing so well. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Suddenly the game has opened up a little bit. People can actually afford to play a little bit if they have an average stack. It's like Unfortunately for these guys, uh, Jan White's the only one who's got left. that. One ten or one thirty is that? And one Bodo now guaranteed fourth place. Is it forty for me? No, five eight suited. Well, this is the thing. You yeah. you wait so long and you pass so many good chances, and then are you really going to just put it in with eight high after all this time? <laughs> That's right, isn't it? But yeah, if, if he absolutely. doesn't, if he doesn't put it in with eight high, he's got two big blinds left. So, you know, in two hands time, it's it's Hobson's choice. But How far ahead is the Jack Ten of? Well, Jack Ten is never too far behind. If you're up against a raggy ace, you're probably six to four, five to four. So, you know, he's against Bodo's range. He's probably even a favourite with Jack Ten. He's got plenty of chips. The thing is, if he does play the hand, he has to raise to isolate. Doesn't want the other people behind coming in. So he's got to he's got to raise to something like three hundred thousand or something. Yeah, and he's getting a reasonable price with the that's sixty thousand. That's why I don't think it's that good a play. You, you, you'd actually pass it here. Yeah. Make well, Phil take a month. Yeah. There's two hands behind. The other thing is, you know that Bodo's probably going to, even if he picks up this set of blinds, he's probably going to bleed down again. And you don't have to be the hero that gets him. That's right. He doesn't have to get involved here. Well, Bodo knows he's going to have to see five cards. Thank you for doubling me up. <laughs> I hope so. I don't know so much. Sorry for calling, but I guess. Okay, you need to put 20,000 more in there. 20,000 more? Oh, it well, was 130. Friendly stuff between the compatriots. You wouldn't call it for 130. And. Well, there's 320,000 in that just pot. Sit down and relax because 8-5 is the nuts. Oh. Six of hearts. Why don't you want the five of hearts? <laughs> kind of really the five. <laughs> or an eight. Six of hearts. Um, well, he's down to, he's down to yeah, two cards. Yeah, there's no there. splits here. You're right. Five of diamonds. Okay. And that's it. Bodo's gone. We're three-handed. Well, he came in through the back door. Bodo second in his heat. Never really got going at this final table. Thank you. But uh, I think he'll be satisfied with this competition. This is a guy to watch for the future for sure. Yan fight. He'll know. You know, big difference between third and second place here. Is there some room to put some pressure on here? Oh, massive amount of room. I mean, it's 250, 140k. Wow. You know, he's in the driving seat here. All in. That's a good all one in. to move all in with the 910 suited. If you do get called, um, you, you're often not in terrible shape. Well, Phil's got the king queen here. Well, Phil really should call here. He hates calling off his tournament. He knows Yan's been slightly tight. What's what. Well, this is, is, it, is this a standard call? Well, this hand is actually with <laughs> Yan. With Yan, this hand is actually the bottom of his range. He hasn't been playing, you know, suited connectors or connectors it's the at all. Structure. It goes 40, uh, 100, 250. Yeah, that's wow. what it's I'm saying. Yeah, so I wouldn't, right. I wouldn't call second. here. You know that it's incredibly oh, sure. valuable. It's so you know that we're both trying to hold on to get to second because it's so valuable. Therefore, your own range is super wide. He's got like um, 50,000. It's 300 like after all. 500,000. If you have an ace, I'm 40 or so. Percent. You could have dominated. It could be a race. You lose so I don't much care. more I'd still in be equity. Calling. 
by losing this pot than you gain by winning, don't you? Yeah, but you, all you're doing is treading water. You know, do you want to win it or you don't want to win it? You're not going to win it by keep folding hands like this three-handed. Look at John Duffy talking to Jennifer Tilly. Does he think that Phil Locke would call? Would Duffy call here? Jesse, please. <laughs> have, you, have you never met John Duffy? So I can never fold a hand that I think is beating you. That's the principle that I have to go by. And if you lose, you lose four out of 210. You're 1.7, you're a monster. You'd still be double us. He's talking himself into a fold, right? Uh, I think he folded, in his mind, he folded three and a half minutes ago. It's hard. I'm putting my sneakers on. That means the probability of calling is going through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, maybe. I he's, like his style. He is. He's entertaining. It is quite hard. I mean, it, it's not I a totally easy, easy decision. Against Luke, hand. obviously, it's automatic, and he knows it. Go that way? Against Luke, my chips would have beaten Luke into the pot. Against Yan, I think Just about it, it for a long time. Go wrong. I say to myself, it's it's going to cost me. My whole my money 470,000. <laughs> wow, is, is, is he I'm, getting ready to call? I'm going to give myself a chance to win the tournament. He's called! Yeah. And, call. and yeah. the yeah. Unabomber, this could be the pot. I know King Queen's a massive hand three handed, but I still think that's a brave call against Yan when Yan has played quite tight. It's a massive pot, 960,000. Oh. Yan will be left with 765. Oh, oh. King or Queen? It's really game on if Phil can win this one. What's the vibe? It doesn't feel good to me. I think Yan's going to hit a nine. That's my prediction. Roger, I've seen a few outdraws this month, so uh, maybe that's why I'm leaning that way. I'm not going to have the heart for all the handshakes if I bust out. You know what I'm saying? I want to get it out of the way. Five cards of Phil Locke's fate. Well, there's the king. There's the king. There's one diamond there, so Yan's got dark, the old dark, uh, backdoor dark, flush draw. Dark, Eight of diamonds would be a nice card dark for him. Low. No, dark low. Two of clubs, three of spades. Two of clubs, I like that card. That's a low card, it's so low it's an ace. He's got it. He's got it, yeah, 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 yeah. That's it, Phil's doubled up. So Phil's gonna take the chip lead. I think, I mean, I, I just think it's so ironic. That call, to me, took a lot more guts than it would have to move with all the hands he passed with. I, yeah, I, no, I mean, I could be wrong, but you know what I'm saying? That he was could have gone out there. For sure, that was a gutsy call, Jesse. I mean, uh, you know, moving all in with the King Queen is one thing, but calling your whole tournament against, you know, of the three, that is the tightest player, Jan, and. Uh, it still that takes a bit of okay, guts. Okay, I think this is my third or fourth time. I think that took to take my shoes off. <laughs> He's shown third us in this three-handed match that he perhaps doesn't have the taste for sticking all his money in quite as much as the other two, and uh, maybe he's just going to be slightly outmuscled. I think Luke Schwartz now he won't be thinking too much about the second and third uh, place structure. Yeah, he's he's right, going to yeah. start gambling for the win now, and I'd expect him to move in at every opportunity. I think, yeah, and you gotta say, Phil Locke, maximum respect. Welcome back to the Palm Beach Casino in London for the Party Poker World Open 5 final table. Our winner tonight gets a quarter of a million dollars and a championship title, so let's get back to the table. A good call gets you wired because the adrenaline just takes over your body during that flop turn in river. And there's Jennifer. Now, she's definitely excited for Phil, but the adrenaline left her when she put her civvies back on. How many do you have? Big blinds or whatever. How many? Ten big blinds. Can you count it out exactly? Go like this. One. I can smell trouble here, and the trouble is for Yan V. Exactly. I don't want to slip up. We're three-handed. Oh, look at all those same man as last time, 9-6. And so all the nines are out. Yeah, yeah they are. So, so to, uh, if, if they do get it on here, yeah, and if he draw into some hearts or uh, three aces. Well, geez, Dan's got 700 plus thousand. That's, I mean, if Phil makes it 
What is he going to make it? About 100 here? Well, Phil knows this is a really super strong hand three-handed. So he's going to make a raise where he's always going to call if he gets re-raised. So he doesn't mind being re-raised here. He's going to make it like 110, 105, something like that. He wants Jan Viet to go all in or Luke Schwartz to go all in. And particularly Luke Schwartz he's going to be thinking about. He's going to think, I've got a better amount where Luke can think he can make me fold. So he doesn't want to make it too big. Probably no, 90,000 would be a good bet one, two, now. Three, four, five, I think 56, he's talking about 50. going all in because he's scared that fight might come over the top of him with two yeah. overcards. Is that what he's one, two, saying three, four, to himself? Five, six, seven, eight, well, nine. Oh, I miscounted my stack. Nine. No. It, it sounds to me like to me, he's going to make a smaller a bet encouraging the all-in if someone has got a hand. So I have 900, so I but if he does change his mind and move left. all in, I think he might not get on. He needs to make a bet of 90,000. That would be the correct bet. He, wa he wants to sell the idea to Luke that if you move all in, you can get me to fold this hand. We know that he won't fold two nines. It's a massive hand, three hand. And we know that Luke won't go all in because he's got nine six. But well, I, don't, I don't think he can pass the Luke stack anyway if he, if he makes any sort of raise. Sure. But, but, it, but he, like you said, his hand, this hand is so strong, the pair of nines. I think he wants to make it like 120. Um, I think that's Let's what see what done. that is. Open this guy. If yeah. he's if they've got something, he can move in. He's definitely calling. I think that's about the bet he's done. One forty. Yeah. 140, yeah, he's bet one forty. So he's trying to offer a bit of bait out there for Yan, saying, "Look at that, that nice tempting bit of stuff I've left out there." And also, if you go all in, I've got plenty. I can still fold. That's what that's what Phil's trying to send. I think the this is the tournament right here now. If he. Absolutely. I, I mean, I, I can't see how Yang can do anything other I, than I move just saw He's passed. Oh He's passed. That, that's, what I, a pass. I just saw a, a look on Yang's face that he looked down and he did not want to wow. see those cards. What a pass. You know, you know when you look down and you're hoping you don't yeah. see anything? I understand yeah. exactly. Yeah. Oh, I, I fancy I, Phil's I talked himself that. out of that. Yeah, and the dynamics. Locke feels the power. You can see the electricity in those fingers, and he's got a Murrin in chips. That number could be unvanquishable. Veit and Schwartz, do they want that title? Kind of think that this is where Locke puts his foot down. That's big. Luke's gone all in from the button. It's found ace 10, a very strong hand, three handed. Little Lark found the 8 5. He'll flap around a bit and fold that one. Well, Jam V's got the king jack. Well, here. this is very interesting now. Well, he's got twice as many chips as Luke. And he can afford to take a gamble. He knows, he knows Luke's range is wide open. He could be raising with a lot of old trashy hands. Lots of kings he's raising with. All the kings he dominates, like king 10, king 9, king 8. Luke would move all in with those hands. Luke would move all in with 7-6 or 6-5, those kind of hands. He's beating all of those. I don't think he likes it now. He really doesn't seem to... The fight seems to have kind of slightly gone out of Yan since he lost the chip lead, but... Uh, well, he has there called. you go. We're in. Yeah, and, this and Luke's is... favourite here, slightly. But Luke's... Uh, neither player's done anything wrong here, Ian. I think, you know, it's a perfectly reasonable situation, three-handed. These are big, big hands, three-handed, and it's just two hands colliding. Well, how buff is full flush here? We're going to be rolls reversed or head up for the title in about five cards. Luke apologising now to Jan about being a little bit disrespectful about him being an internet qualifier early. He is a good boy, really. He's a great guy. I don't even want to see a 10, just an ace. He's a nice guy and great for poker. Uh-oh. Well, Don't it's looking it. good for the ace 10 at the minute. Don't yeah, backdoor clubs for Yan. But uh, the ace is leading. Ace. Whoa, oh, it's a bit of a card. Oh, I don't know. Was that, that wasn't a good card, was it? King 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 well, King he didn't Jack. need to hit, King and now he has hit. It's oh, roughly any 50, paint. 50 with a card to cut. This is any no paint red. here. Oh, any paint or any club. Red. A queen, a jack, a king, an eight, or a club. Oh, my God. That's pretty oh, much half the deck. Give him a queen, because then he'll have the stone locks. Oh, 
It's come it's a club. club. It's a club, man. He made the flush. He's made the flush. Wow. He well, didn't see it at first. I think when he went to shake hands, he was he was trying to avoid a pink card. He had uh, he had plenty of the deck. The other guy to catch. He had half the deck. That was tough. And Luke did say no ten, no ten, no ten. That's a bit of a body blow. Um, but we're heads up, guys. There we go. Out in third place is Luke Schwartz. It's always a shame to see you go from the table because you're very entertaining to watch. But uh, there's two strong players out there. Who do you think might take this down? Um, I'm not sure he's going to take it down. I don't really care now that I'm out. But um, the online qualifiers played pretty well. Yeah. He's played pretty fearless, and um, that's probably the way you have to play these tournaments. So yeah. good luck to him. Well, looking at the head-to-head -head stats, uh, very similar though, Phil Locke, that V-chip, he has been more active. You look at the steal attempts, really, he is getting chips and playing pots, but I think it's gonna change heads up. What do you think, Neil? Yeah, when they, well, when they, the, the key thing is when they got down to four-handed and then three-handed, uh, Jan Voigt went very quiet, particularly when they went three-handed. He had, he had double the other two guys' chips, like he had double loops and double fills, and he was happy to sit back and wait, and he only really played when he had a hand. Phil Lark was happy to crack away and raise with any two, and heads up, obviously, you don't get that many hands, and, you know, you have to be prepared to stick your chips in. Jan Voigt's got an ace, so we'll find out if he's prepared to stick his chips in. You should be prepared to do a bit of gambling with an ace heads up. I'm sitting here with two guys who know Nobody. Oh, oh, wow. This is it. This is no, the heads up for no, the title. He, yeah, you, no. Don't get carried away here, Jesse. Yeah, the chips ain't going in here. Ian's don't worry. Ian's absolutely right. I mean, if this was two different players, uh, maybe. But, um, I mean, Phil Lark's not even really that happy about getting his chips in with Ace-8 in this spot. And, and I can tell you that Jan, Jan by, you know, he's passed a few hands tonight. And he, he, might, he might lose a few chips here, but he's, he's not going to be going all in, I think. Obviously, he's raised. He, he's supposed to raise with an ace. And Phil Lark shouldn't really be thinking of calling. He should be thinking about re-raising. He's just it, trying to get the size of his bet right. In Lark's heat, he, he picked up the ace-eight, similar position, similar stacks. Went all in, got called by the ace-jack. Again, he's got this interesting thing where he, he likes to think about risk-reward. And it's a, it's a good thing to think about. If he goes all in here, he's betting 8.50 to win 140. That doesn't seem like very good odds. But if he puts half of his stack in, he might as well go all in. Let's see. All in. All in. Wow. Yeah, wow! Well, now he has What's bought he half got of his stack One, in. So he's got 300 behind. And Jan's gone all in. I, he's called! He's gone he's gone and well, you was right, Jesse. Yeah, we, were, we both said that. <laughs> and, uh, well, as you guys well know, Forget wow. about the money, forget about wow. everything else. It's all about the title. Nobody remembers who comes in second. And there can only be one champion. Lock. 21% split pots here. Yeah, there's quite a few split pot outs. And uh, obviously it can come a four as well. It's not impossible. Or a straight. Yeah. Fight saying, if you're not going to put up the four, make them big. Well, there's the eight. There's an eight. That's so game over. It's pretty much over now. Is it the Unabomber? It is! That's game over and it's going to cripple Yan V, leaving with uh, just under 300,000. He's got Yan fight well, down to the bare nubbins. The way they was playing the game, I didn't think for one instant all the chips would be going in there. I think the, the problem there was uh, Yan raised too much. Yeah, and also whether maybe they just that little break they had before they played heads up, they just stepped away from the table for a second, composed themselves, maybe have a little chat with their friends and stuff. Maybe Yang came back with a slightly different game plan, get a bit more aggressive, and uh, yeah, it's pretty unlucky they're both finding an ace. Locke looking to seal the deal. Vite on last gasp. All in with any two, I'm guessing. Now he's, well, he's got an ace anyway, but now you sort of have a sneaky peek and, and put your chips in, don't you? No, there's no sense being right. safe here. Does he have 320 net 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 or 310? I think it's 310. So it's going to cost Phil 250 to call, and there's 370 in there, which means he's getting six to four. 
this is often the way. And uh, his hand figures to be seven to four. His, his hand figures to be slightly bigger than six to four because often he's up against two over cards when he's got six five. He's often going to be a two to one chance. So again, it's actually quite tricky for Phil to call here. He doesn't want to cheaply double him up. Against two overs, he's he's closer to two to one. He doesn't really like it, and I think he's going to fold. About four to nine if I just fold and continue on. 25 chips. He's got a connected cards, which makes him. It's fine, it's, fine, it's, yeah. it's it's eight to 13, 39, it 62, like 38. Yeah. Well, he's uh, those hyper kinetic internet. Yeah, he's he's big on the vibes, Phil Locke. Very big on the vibes. Normally I would fold. I'm just thinking if it's a math thing that I'm missing that I have to call. 25 for 37. 25 for 37. It's like two and a half for four. I I think it's going to come down to how he feels. Yeah, maths wise, there's really nothing in it. It's a question of, do you want to cheaply double the guy up or do you want to let him? Get his confidence going when a couple of this quick is hands. More technical fold than anything else. It's a really close decision, and I, I, I don't think you could fault good. him for going either way. Either. It's nine. He wants it bad. He wants it really bad. He's already won. I think he won a title over in Cardiff a couple of years ago. He Phil Locke. He certainly did. Jesse he won the old uh, William Hill Grand Prix yeah. a, some time ago. Now he hasn't really won too many other titles. Phil Lock. WPT champion, of course. Party Poker WPT champion. These days he's playing a lot more cash than tournaments. Uh, doesn't really actually play that many. During the World Series this year, there's 55 tournaments. He, he only played about uh, three. Oh, sorry. He was famous for showing up to the main event uh, in disguise, wasn't he? Didn't yeah, that was two, 2008 main event. Yeah, he turned up dressed as an old man. Uh, he got a makeup artist. He paid them a few thousand dollars to spend a day at prosthetics and everything. And it was, uh, he said, it was interesting how people played completely differently against him. Well, this this feels like Queen Nine. I mean, yeah. Right. Yeah, that should really just be an instant all-in. I don't know whether Phil was trying to sell some kind of advertising there. Here got, we sure. go. Here we go. Not really. Okay, yeah, Jan's decided he can't really afford to blind down again. <sighs> Jack Sevens above average in a heads-up match. At least I don't have to take off my shoes. Come on, queen or nine. Oh, that might be the factor. Fights come this far. Jack seven. He's played a great I'm tournament. Queen nine, Jack five. Five. queen nine, Jack Seven. Yeah, and if he doubles up here, he's got 740,000 and... Uh, it's game on again, really. 48 great so players like started this tournament. So you what can a, get a four, field six, it four. was. Come on. Phil four. Locke right now, four. top of the Super tree. Five. Two Jeez. cards away from the title. Four. Four. He called a four, Phil. I can't believe him. Ten. Yeah, ace. 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 He's got a six, seven, nine, uh, six, seven jack now. I'll take an ace. Queen, nine. Eight. Ace for a Deuce. chop. I'll take a pair of the board. There's, come on. Vavoom. Six for a chop. Oh! That's oh, it. Okay. And we got our champion, Phil Lack. <laughs> <laughs> He's done it. Phil Lack. And uh, what an entertaining player he's been. And there's Jennifer Tilly. If she couldn't win herself, you know she wouldn't mind seeing Phil win it. Queen of Spades. For Yan fight, well, he's had a good tournament, hasn't he? That's yeah, not bad, is it, Jesse? Hundred thousand dollars, sitting about. People throw a few cards at you. Started qualified on the internet. Nice run up from a five dollar bill, that's for sure. Yes. It's been a hard fought battle through a world class field, and we've had two fantastic performances out of these men. Jan Veit is our runner up, and our worthy champion is Phil Locke. Congratulations, Phil. I can see on your face that this means a great deal to us. Can you describe the emotion in this? It's really incredible. Uh, you know, you fight mathematical journeys all the time, and you see yourself as a point on the curve, and it's an incredible feeling to be the last point on the very edge of the curve that finished it off. It's, uh, you know, it's a it's the feeling that you shoot for in tournaments. Whereas in a cash game, you just play, win. It's the, my opponents were insanely 
intelligent, very crafty, and very tough to beat. And uh, I certainly got what I needed when I needed to. I mean, it was, I had chips to survive the aces. I had, somehow I swam through that. This guy was just giving me headaches all through. <laughs> I was mostly lucky, but I made some good plays too and some bad plays, and I was overall um, happy with my play. Jan played his hands in such a way that they were hard to fight from a math point of view. You actually had to wake up with higher parts in your hand range, and it's very difficult to play against that. And, you know, you have to make some scary calls occasionally, whatever. And it, he was uh, a terror, and <laughs> I feel very, very like incredibly lucky to get through him. That's high praise indeed. Well done, buddy. That was well done to both cool. of you. And in fact, I have a trophy for you. I hope that you've got a place for this and uh, somewhere to put it, because this, I'd like to present you with the Party Poker, party poker World, World Open, Open 5. five. You are the it's champion. An honor well to take done, this. Thanks so much. I'm so proud of you. Well done. Thumbs up. There you go. Good It's incredible. I mean, it just goes to show anybody can win one of these things, you know? <laughs> anybody can do it. 48 of the best poker players in the world sat down at this table here at the Palm Beach Casino in London, fighting for this trophy, the championship of the Party Poker World Open 5. But it can only go to one man, and that man is Mr. Phil Love. What did he do? Oh my lord. I miss you, Sammy. No, I miss you. Bad. I really miss you. Yes! You shake your head and then raise. Oh. Killer Tilly. You know what I mean? Oh! Yes! You saw a king, Sammy. He tried to outplay me. I saw you. Him, you know. give up and then you That's win. Right. That's right. He's going to be sick. That's the best feeling I've had about a hand in ages. I might have the record for the most ignorant comments on national television. <laughs> it's the best bet I've ever seen in my life.